Hello, I'm going to just get started with the dissection of this. It is uh, Paris Fendale Agrianina. Uh, it is the Budwing Mantis. Um, this is a female, uh, approximately eight, nine months old. Not totally sure because I got her when she was already an adult, so didn't do any molts after that. Um, you can tell it is a female because it has these five segments down here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, sorry, six, not five. Um, <laughs> um, I, I can personally also tell this is a female because it's already laid eggs, but you know, there you go. Um, uh, yeah, so just you can see uh, this one I always, I always really like. It's these lovely violet coloured eyes. When you look here at the eyes, you can see what you might think would be a, a pupil. Actually, that's not. Um, it is uh, simply that uh, mantises have compound eyes, like most insects. And uh, compound eyes are made of lots of little tubes uh, with like a uh, uh, an optic protein at the bottom. It's quite a while since I studied them. Sorry, <laughs> second year degree, and I've now graduated. Um, uh, but that is simply where you can look straight down the tubes that the thing is made of and uh, look at the retina below which is black so it might look like the eyes follow you around the room but uh, that's just a uh, sort of optical illusion um, you can see the mandibles really nicely here um, uh, yeah just there um, mantis mandibles extremely extremely powerful they can bite through lot pr pretty much anything the insect world can throw at them um, I've never had one bite me uh, it's usually the uh, Spikes on the forelimbs that uh, they don't hurt, they just give you a little prickle. So, yeah, nothing to worry about there. I really would recommend keeping them as pets, they're great. Um, if you look down just under here, you won't get to see. Uh, in between the legs here, you can't really see it, um, it was, I'll sh it'll be more obvious when I'm taking the legs off, uh, is the mantis's ear, which is uh, what I did my dissertation on at university. Um, the mantis has a single ear called the cyclopean ear. Um, that is actually tuned to ultrasonic frequencies given out by bats because bats are one of the major predators of mantises anywhere in the world really um, so they have uh, the ear tuned to a specific uh, ultrasonic frequency um, and uh, it helps them escape the bats um, I think just from memory I think it's like an 85% survival rate with mantises that can hear versus a 13% survival rate with deafened mantises um, there's a lot of really interesting work by um, Tribal Horn, T R I B L E H O R N, and uh, David D David D Yaga, Y A G E R. If you're interested, um, it's all sort of available online. Right here we go. It's all pinned out now. Um, so here you can see much better the structure of so six legs. Uh, there's the head up here, so you can see two eyes, antennae, and uh, the mandible just there. Um, you can see here that this dark and a banded orange colour all on the inside of the forelimbs. Um, I've mentioned this in a previous video, but uh, mantises to have this because when they uh, they will actually naturally adopt this pose of sort of arms splayed out, uh, looking as big as possible. Uh, this is called a threat display. So they'll do this when they feel that they're in danger or they want to compete with another um, mantis. So basically, say is that okay? I won't eat you. You don't eat me. We cool? Yeah. Um, uh, if we look down here, hopefully the camera will adjust, yes, here we go, lovely. Just, uh, that one, uh, here. This little slit is called the, uh, that's, that's the ear, it's the cyclopean ear. Um, so you have the, uh, uh, cyclopean deep groove there and the cyclopean shallow groove there. Um, down here, uh, in sort of this inside here, uh, I think it's called tympanum, which are extensions of the breathing system. Um, the uh, breathe, insects breathe through the tracheal system, which means they have little holes in the side of the abdomen down here, little donut shaped holes that open and close, and that leads to a big branching sort of tunnel like network all, all through the insect. Um, and uh, that means there's a huge, huge surface for gas exchange. Um, so oxygen can get into the tissues. Uh, mantises also have, um, I can't remember if it's four or six, one of them, uh, these are called auxiliary hearts, which basically just pump all the fluid all through everywhere, just a bit. Um, they don't have a dedicated organ like mammals do. Um, 
uh, but yeah, you can see the legs here really nicely. Um, I've mentioned this a couple of times. Uh, the Tarsi here, very well preserved on this one. Um, this little lady wasn't so old when she died, but she was um, nine, ten months probably by the end. So you know, getting there. Um, the raptoral claw you can see here really nicely. Um, so you see these spikes along here. Uh, it's in this section, uh, this section, and then this section here is the foot. Um, so this is what it's actually used for climbing when the front legs used for climbing. This bit is all killing. Uh, that's enough, Jerry. Um, uh, mantises store energy in these bits, which are very big, beefy sections of the of the leg. Um, so they uh, store energy, I believe, in the flexor muscle, for want of a better word, uh, and then wait until the opportunity comes to be able to strike. Um, and then release all the energy through the flexor, uh, which gives an incredibly fast strike. If you ever, if you just Google uh, your YouTube uh, mantis strike, you'll see uh, why it's quite so impressive within the insect world. Um, moving down the body, we have, as I said, these uh, segments. So uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, um, which denotes that it's a female. You have the cirque down here, which these are little sort of bobbly uh, string things down here. They're used to sense uh, wind direction, um, which helps the mantis take off and fly. These, as I'll explain in a minute, are pretty vestigial in this mantis because this is a budwing mantis, uh, which are actually flightless. The wings, which I'll show you in a second, are actually uh, completely vestigial. Um, so yeah, I'll just. Right, this is the same mantis. Uh, this is the dorsal view now, so you can see the back. The head is facing down, arms splayed out. And as I say, this is a budwing mantis, so it has these little vestigial wings. Um, see, normally in female mantises, these wings here would extend right the way down almost to the end of this. Uh, but these are vestigial, which means they're not actually used for flying. So th these mantises are flightless. Okay, here you see I've removed the uh, top. Uh, two wings, that's the first layer. Uh, it, uh, mantises, like all insects, have um, uh, two pairs of wings, so they have the outer guard wings and these are the inner flight wings, they're more fragile. Uh, flies, as members of Diptera, uh, meaning two wing, only have one pair of wings and then these little things called halters which attach to the upper ones there. Um, if you look at uh, these wings here, the wing covers are cut up. Uh, you can see, they, again, they have the lovely orange coloration on the bottom. Um, so it's one to predators or uh, other mantises. You can also see it looks slightly eye-shaped. looks a little bit like an eye. Uh, that's called Batesian mimicry, where uh, you get it like owl butterflies or atlas moths. Uh, when what, a thing tries to look like something dangerous in order to uh, deter things from coming near it. Right, if I try now and unfold one of these flight wings, you might be able to see the much more delicate structure of them. Hopefully. Yeah, lovely. There you go. You can see uh, they've got a much more sort of veined pattern. So you can see, even though these are vestigial wings, they're still absolutely beautiful. They're not used for flight, but even so, they're absolutely lovely. Um, you can see there's two points of connection, so one, two, three, four for the two types of wings. Uh, and obviously these are a much different colour. Okay, here we have one of the inner wings uh, cut off and put in there. Uh, get a probe. Uh, you can see through this bit, uh, that's actually what it's all like. It's not the, that's just because it's folded a little, it's the same composition all the way through. It's this lovely uh, veined wing texture, much like a butterfly's honestly. Uh, but you can see from the size of this, which is uh, there's no sense of scale here, but that is about uh, a centimetre long. There's no way that's going to sustain flight for that mantis, considering you're just going to have twice sort of that surface. Uh, when you compare that to the flight surfaces of other mantises, it's not going to do anything at all for um, uh, for flight. Okay, if we take a look down here, you might just be able to see. Yes, you can. Uh, if I move that in. There. Along here, you can see the little line between the two, between the upper and lower segments. Uh, that is where the insect's breathing holes are. They're called spiracles, uh, and that's why I said leads into the tracheal system. Right here we go. Same mantis opened up. Um, 
you can see I've pulled out a lot of eggs here, these little uh, oblong yellow things here. Um, interesting difference I noticed between this and the last mantis I dissected. The last mantis I dissected. This one has a lot less fat. Um, you can only really see a little bit of it there, this yellow stringy stuff. Um, down in there, you can see these two little white lines coming down here. I believe, I'm not sure, but I believe that those are the kidneys, or at least the uh, some form of the excretory system sort of that deals with getting toxins out of the body. Uh, that's quite similar to one I've seen in, I believe, a locust. Uh, I'm just going to cut a little lot, a little further up here. See what we can see further at the body. Let's have a look. Okay, you can almost see what I was talking about earlier with the uh, tympanum, the uh, membrane which allows. Uh, if that will focus, in which allows sound to be carried. You can see a little hole there, that's leading into the tracheal system. Uh, if you look down this side of the body, uh, we can pull it over a little. This is the digestive system, the alimentary tract. Um, there was, uh, when I, yeah, there's a little blockage here, which I believe is what might have killed this mantis, um, down here, of just basically. Um, feces, uh, excretory material, whatever it is. Um, but certainly the last, if you check out the Hyrogula Majusca video on this channel, um, uh, you'll see that the stomach in that one was swelled to absolutely enormous size, which I believe might have been what killed that one. Um, the eggs, you can see, are all sort of chained together. Um, uh, this sort of uh, beige coloured goo stuff over here uh, that's what eventually forms the the pouch that the uh, eggs go in. I'm gonna focus properly, hopefully. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, it's just a view of the back. There's the guard over here. The spikes. The back. Uh, wing attachments. Gut. Kidneys. Eggs. Reproductive system. And that's about it. Cheers for watching. I guess. Um, yeah.